Welcome to another episode of CISO Insights and we have with us once again Steve Interfeld, Advisory CISO at Akamai to dive into the latest state of the internet report. For over 15 years, Akamai has been publishing these in-depth analysis and this year's edition focuses on frontline cybersecurity defense. In this conversation, we will explore emerging threats, risk management strategies, and the evolving landscape of cybersecurity, ranging all the way from ransomware, API attack, to network vulnerabilities and Kubernetes security. We will break down key findings and provide actionable insights for defenders in today's digital battlefield. We will talk about how are cyber criminals exploiting new technologies like AI, what trends are shaping the security landscape, and most importantly, how can you strengthen your defenses? You really don't want to miss this episode as we uncover the critical takeaway from this cutting edge research. And while you are here, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Now let's go and talk to Steve. Steve, it's great to have you back on the show. It's great to be back. I'm excited for another year of this. Talk a bit about this report, the idea behind this report, and for how long you folks have been doing this. Akamai, for over 15 years now, has been putting out state of the internet reports. And so we've done them in the past on, you know, industries like finance or commerce. We've done them on specific kind of attacks like ransomware or API attacks. And this year we're, we're kind of changing directions a little and our first one is instead of the, the normal 20, 30 page report you'll see in the past is over 50 pages. And we're, we're focusing on the front line. So in our Defender's Guide 2025, Fortify the Future of Your Defense, we're really taking a look at how to help those that are out there actually doing the defense understand what's going on and best practices to use. And again, all Akamai re research ties back to where we have visibility. So, you know, we have our protecting the edge, our web application firewall, protecting APIs, protecting large language models, protecting your JavaScript environment. We do internal host segmentation, so we see a lot of threats from there. And then making sure your employees and your customers have access through stopping DNOS and DNS, uh, web attacks and, and infrastructure layer 3, 4 DDoS. And so across all of these security capabilities, we're sharing some of that research. Since you mentioned that you folks have been doing this report for a long time, which also is, uh, it gives kind of us a good visibility to how things were and how things are now. So let's talk about the focus area of this report. I'm gonna talk about this in three sections. We're gonna talk about risk management, network and architecture security, and host security. So in this first section, we really wanted to talk about the ability for you to understand how to prioritize you know, how dangerous something is. And so we talk about a risk scoring methodology. You know, we're helping you identify, quantify, and mitigate threats across these different environments. And we're, we're explaining the exposure ratio. And so in this short sh show, I won't go into the depth on this, but looking at this report, going out and grabbing this report, you'll be able to, to take a look at saying, which systems are exposed and how should that affect what I prioritize on protecting? And then the second is a classic thing we report on. What malware are we seeing? You know, SSH open uh, protocol is, we, there's over 20 million machines just facing the internet. Uh, and we break that out a little bit by region. Uh, the US is, is the most impacted. We talk about the protocols used here SMB, SSH, and RDP. And this is a combination of both our honeypot research and Shodan. And so there's this huge look at, at a simple thing that you can go check on your network. Where do you have SSH open exposed to the internet? And the other one we've seen a lot across all the news reports is the bots that are attacking out there. And so we go into depth on three of the bots. Notabot, which is a derivative of the old Mariah bot, which is DDoS, 
Fritz Frog, which is a log four shell, which is again, getting a shell on a system is getting you access. And Redtail, which is a system that will take over and use system for crypto mining. So these are three different business models for the hackers, but three insights on kind of the attacks that you're going to be exposed to. The next section is around network architecture. And here, you know, the first thing we're going to talk about is um, VPNs. We continue to see VPNs is, is a, for most of us, almost a legacy technology. Our appliances have, have continued to be emerged as an architectural vulnerability. Um, some of them are very, you know, specific vendor, like you might see something against Palo Alto, Others are more protocol based, but we, we do a deep dive into some of the different infrastructures that are exposed. And then we talk about the common types of attack, authentication, bypass, remote code, execution flaws, extraction of configuration data and default configurations that are hard coded with encryption keys. And all of these make those systems vulnerable. Some of these, you know, if it's a zero day, you may need to do mitigation. If it's not a zero day, it might be the way you configured things. So it's a combination of understanding when and how to mitigate threats. And in a lot of cases, just prevent threats from poor infrastructure uh, maintenance or hygiene. And then the other one we dive into is kind of a classic. Cross-site scripting has been around a long time. But well, we really kind of dive into the environment that we protect JavaScripts. And you know, if you're out there and you have JavaScript, it's, it, your customers are interacting with that through their web browser to, to buy things or fill out forms or do analytics for your company on your customer. And so it's a very important environment. And cross-site scripting, we're seeing ramping up as one of the attack vectors. So we kind of go into details on how to understand that and how to mitigate in that environment. And then that last section is around host security. And here we focus on one of the, the greatest infrastructure growth areas we're seeing is Kubernetes. And so again, Kubernetes is this framework of containers that you can use to, to build your infrastructure out. And we walk through six vulnerabilities, uh, common vulnerability exploitation, CVEs, and focus on these command injection attacks within the ones that we've discovered and, and can share. And so we talk about, you know, the resource stalling, the access and the privilege escalation that can result in your Kubernetes environment. So across all of this is it, you know, a very, the, the risk scoring is helpful at the tactical level. So all of this is very much, how are you on the front lines doing and protecting and what is going on with the threat on the front lines. If you look at these three uh, different you know, areas that you talked about, are you seeing any common pattern and common trend where you're seeing, hey, even if we are talking about networking or devices, this is the trend that we're seeing here? I will see a couple trends. The first is where, we're, where we have emerging technology, where we have transformation is often where you see them focusing. You know, so they'll go in and they'll say, you're, you're moving to containers. You're moving from traditional servers up to Kubernetes. Um, so it's not going to be as secure. You don't have as much maturity around your processes. You may not have all the security tools built in uniformly. You don't have those security guardrails, I like to call them, as people deploy new containers. And so... You know, as we move into APIs, as we move into containers, as we move into these large language models, are we're just not as mature. So I see a lot of focus on that as an area right for attack. The other is some of these things, it's just, they keep going back to them. You know, you, I often talk about the OWASP top 10 and OWASP is a great reference. It has top 10 for web pages top 10 for APIs and top 10 for large language models. And that one was only out a, about a year before it changed. And they're all great, but most of them don't change that often. So cross-site scripting has been around forever, and yet we continue to see it as an area that they focus on because they're still being successful. 
Perfect, awesome. Since the name of the report is State of Internet, and of course, we kind of are overwhelmed with AI, Gen AI all the time, and we also run a separate show called Secure by Design. And we hear a lot how bad actors are leveraging AI, Gen AI, to make their attacks even more sophisticated. In this report, did you look at AI? If not, uh, will you be looking at AI and impact on security in the future? You know, it's a great topic. We don't necessarily go into it in this current Defender's Guide. We have talked about it in some of our blogs, and we are looking at that in some of our products, both our products and how to defend large language models in Gen AI, as well as how to put them in our products so people, you know, can more easily ask a natural language question within, say, our segmentation tool and, and get a quick answer back. That might be a great topic for a future show. When we look at these reports, of course, they take a pulse where things are, but they also teach us, you know, we can learn a lot of lessons or we can improve our process. So how folks can leverage the findings of this report to improve their security posture? Yeah, I think that's the key. At the, at the end of every day, I want to know how I can take action on knowledge. So, you know, I think the first is... Um, understanding a little bit more about bots, the more I understand the enemy, the better I understand which tools and techniques and methodologies I want to use. So, you know, as you look at the bots, understanding when do you need just a simple WAF, do, when do you need a specialized tool based on the kind of attacks that are happening. Um, understanding as you go back and look at your architecture at the host level, you know, you've got that great perimeter defense, but if somebody gets in, with one of these, you know, shell attacks. Have you done segmentation appropriately? Do you understand, you know, network segmentation versus host segmentation versus, you know, software process segmentation? And which one are you leveraging? Um, and so that's another area. Uh, the classics around cross-site scripting. Um, you know, understanding, you know, when to add an output encoding on all user control parameters. And, and that's obviously a very deep dive into the, the solution. Um, but but it gives you those kind of tactical, technical insights of, of when you should use it. Uh, overall, I love uh, our one of our uh, researchers, Robert um, Branco, put out, uh, his insights in at the very end, and these are most more of those holistic. You know, the first is implement, you know, your basic cyber hygiene everywhere. You want to make sure you're doing the fundamentals correctly. Um, you know, things like cross-site scripting or DNS, DNOS should not get through because we know how to do those fundamentals correctly. Um, you know, considering labor, layering your defense, I've talked about the MITRE attack framework, those 14 different uh, techniques or tactics they use to get in and, and making sure you have security controls around all 14 steps that someone needs to take typically to break into your systems. Keep a laser sharp focus on business critical services. Again, that, that risk management, understanding how to prioritize on what's important we can't protect everything. Quite honestly, if somebody breaks into the lunch menu, I don't care. I don't want to break into the PCI credit card environment. So understanding, you know, how to use that risk management and, and that scope. And finally, making sure you kind of think through your relationships. Do you have a trusted incident response partner? Somebody that you is on call either internally or externally. And quite honest, most of us are in a hybrid mode. We have some internal teams Things like DDoS may be external. It, you know, if you're if you're lucky enough to have one, you're you're a very lucky company at this point. Steve, thank you so much for joining me today and uh, sharing insights on this report. Thanks once again for your time today, and I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Thank you.